Welcome to Module 3, Word Templates for Microsoft Dynamics GP. In this module, we'll cover configuration or how to configure your <clears throat> Word Templates for Microsoft Dynamics GP. We'll take a look at how to make modifications to the templates that we provide with the product. We'll take a look at how to do assignments. So once I've made a modification or created a new template, how do I assign those specific, two specific customers or vendors? And then finally, we'll finish this module by looking at security and how do I grant security access to the different templates that I provide? So switching over to Microsoft Dynamics GP. From the home screen, the first thing we do for Word templates is basically go in and look at the configuration for the template itself. So navigating to the reports menu, in the reports menu, towards the bottom of the menu, we've added two new menu options, one for template maintenance and one for template configuration. So let's go ahead and select template configuration. The template configuration window allows me to determine which templates I want to enable or disable. So by expanding the tree view, I can see I've got templates or a folder structure or tree view structure for Contoso Electronic Systems and also one for Fabricam Incorporated. When I expand those, those tree views out, now I can see that I've got templates available for sales and purchasing. Further expansion shows the actual templates I have available for those, those uh, modules. And one thing to point out is that when you install Microsoft Dynamics GP 2013, all your templates are enabled by default. So there's no work that you have to do to go in and configure. There's no additional work for security. Everything's automatically enabled just by installing the product itself. So if I choose to uninstall, maybe I don't want to use a particular, um, maybe I don't want to use any of my purchasing templates. Basically, I can just turn them off at the series level, or I can turn them off individually. The template configuration window also allows me to add images. So one of the biggest uh, pain points that people had regarding uh, report writer reports, let me get rid of this little message down here. One of the biggest uh, pain points that we heard over the years as far as uh, report writer reports or basically the reporting tool that's proprietary to Report Dynamics GP is the fact that if I wanted to go in and make a simple modification to my report, like adding a company logo to the report, that forced me to create a modified report. With the modified report then, I had to go in, grant separate security access to the report just because I made a simple change like adding a logo. Templates enable users to make these simple modifications without ever having to touch this report writer report. So essentially, it is a template that lays on top of an existing report writer report that allows you to make these changes quickly, easily, and from within a familiar application such as Microsoft Word. So the first step, if I want to go in and add images to my companies or company logos, I select the company that I want to add the image for and select the plus, plus button. At this point, I'm just navigating out into my file structure, my Win Windows Explorer, and I can select the image that I want to use for my company logo. In this case, I have selected Contoso. I could come in, select Fabricam, go through the same process, and select my Fabricam logo. Now, if I had more images or if I had additional companies that I wanted to assign images to, I just go through the same process for each company that I want to add a logo to. So now in this case, I've quickly and easily added a logo for my company that I want to represent on the, my sales and do, uh, purchasing documents that I send out to my customers and partners without ever having to really touch the report, write a report behind it. So we'll go ahead and we'll cancel out of that. And we'll select OK to save those changes and select Save. The other way that we can quickly turn off or disable the, the Word templates is to, at the bottom of the screen, we have this check, checkbox labeled Enable template te Report Templates. In this case, if I, don't, if I just want to completely disable the Word template functionality, instead of having to go in and unselect all the <clears throat> different companies or different uh, series that I don't want to have templates enabled for, I can simply go to the bottom of this window and unmark the checkbox. And uh, basically at that point, it disables all my Word templates and my existing report writer reports would print instead of my template. Okay, so let's look at a real life example of why somebody would use templates. So we'll go into our sales transactions and we'll look at a batch. 
Now I've got a batch already created that has three transactions in the batch. One transaction is for uh, Aaron Fitz, one transaction is for Adam Park, and the third transaction in the batch is for advanced paper. What Word templates allow me to do is they allow me to create personalized documentation for each one of those customers. So the example that we've heard over the years, especially when we were doing research around this feature and why we should create it and how we should do this, is the example where we had customers that had um, the Canadian government as a customer and the United States government as a customer. Each one of those entities or each one of those government agencies needed to have different information showing up on their purchase orders, for example. So basically the, what they had to do in order to support these different requirements for different customers is they had to go in, they had to modify an existing report writer report for that particular customer, save that and grant security to, that, to the users to that customer report. Every time they printed a different report, maybe they printed a sales transaction for the Canadian government agency, they would have to grant themselves security access to print that report for the Canadian government agency. Then they would turn around and grant security access to the United States government agency that they want to send a different report to. So this became you know, very cumbersome to say the least, to say that you had to manage all these different reports because there were simple changes because maybe you know, one agency required um, a certain field on the invoice and another one didn't. So essentially, again, what templates do is we allow you to create that, that personalization for the documents that you send out to your customers and vendors without having to touch the report writer report. Basically, you're just, again, in a friendly, user-friendly environment that most people understand, which is Word, Microsoft Word. So let's pull up that batch. So I've got a template batch selected. We'll go ahead and print the batch. and select print. Now when I get to my print destination window, I have the option to print it to the screen, printer, or file. In this case, I'll go to the screen. And I also have the option to choose between a report type of template or a report type of standard. It defaults in, the application will default in with template if a template is available. So essentially what has happened is that we have these 35 plus different templates that are available for Microsoft Dynamics GP. Again, upon installing the application, those templates are readily available and, able to, and enabled for you to use. So when I'm going through the printing process, the application will determine whether or not I have a template available for this document that I want to print. If a template is available, then we default in template as the report type. If there is no template available, then it would report or the report type would default in as standard. Basically, as, as a user, I have the option and the flexibility to determine which one of these report types I want to print this report in. Again, standard will print the report writer version of the report, and the template will print the Word document. So let's just go to the screen, and we'll cancel out of our exception report. So now you see that after I selected print, the next thing that I see as a user is I see Word um, come up, the Word application come up on the screen. And now this is the really great thing about reporting, or excuse me, uh, Word templates, is that if I had a batch, and in the past, if I'm just using the proprietary report writer system, I would have to print these reports separately. I would have to change security access to make sure I'm getting the right report. In this case, I've got three separate reports going to three separate co companies that have three different formats. So as we scroll down, we see the first report, the sales invoice to Aaron Fitz Electrical. And we can see that they have um, a few Xbox items that they have on their order. So what I've done is I've created an Xbox template. And essentially what I've done is I've added these cross-sale items to the, bottom of the, app, to the uh, bottom of the template. So we have a feature in Microsoft Dynamics GP for additional, for cross-selling essentially, or, or uh, suggested items. So essentially what I can do is I can some, run some reports and say that, you know, if I'm selling a particular Xbox item, I can also try and cross-sell another, you know, related Xbox item. And most people have seen that experience in their shopping experience online, you know, recommended items or, or things that other customers bought when they, when they bought you know, an Xbox, for example. So in this case, I've got um, a type cover. I've got, um, actually in this case, I'm, I'm referencing things for the Surface because I see that the first uh, thing that they bought were, was a Surface. They bought 26 units of the Surface. Surface Pro. So I'm going to try and cross sell them on trying to buy a keyboard, for example. So now when the customer gets this, you can see that this is a fully functional document. So I've got the links 
uh, fully functional. So when the customer receives this via email, they can open the document and select the link and go right to the type cover for the Surface Pro. So in this case, it's, again, it's, it's an easy way for me to go and cross-sell information right within the invoice that I'm sending out to the customer. As we scroll down, now we see the service or the um, sales invoice for Adam Park. Adam Park has purchased mainly Xbox items. So I assigned the Xbox template to Adam Park. So in this case now I'm doing the same type of thing. I'm trying to cross sell or upsell um, other accessories for the Xbox. Now the third invoice that we have is for advanced paper. Now advanced paper, I went in and I did not assign any template specifically for advanced paper. So what I did is I basically just said, we're going to have advanced paper, they're just going to use our default template, and this is what you get from the default. So again, it's still in the Word environment, a Word document, but in this case, it gives them this, the standard of the default um, Word template. So again, that's just a, an easy example of how I can take these modifications, make them to the report, without ever having to touch the, the underlying report writer report underneath it. So I just wanted to give you an example up front of what Word templates are, the power of the Word template, what you can actually do with them. So again, we just looked at how do, what are the pain points? Why do we create Word templates? Again, we created the Word templates as a way for people to go in, customers and vendors, to quickly go in and make modifications to those report writer reports without ever actually touching the report. So making those simple changes, making those very simple. Next, we'll look at how to configure. Again, I touched on this a little bit. Um, there's really not much to the configuration. Um, essentially, you come into the application. You come into the application. You go to reports, template configuration, and that's it. Again, by default, all the templates are enabled. So there's no additional setup that you have to do in order for your templates to work as soon as you install Microsoft Dynamics GP. So that was an overview of the configuration or how to configure your Word templates for Microsoft Dynamics GP. Next, let's take a look at template modifications. So I'll show you how I made those modifications to the template that I just demonstrated around the Xbox and also the Surface items. So going back to the reports menu, Again, towards the bottom of the menu, we see a template maintenance, one, template maintenance form or menu option. This brings up our report template maintenance window. This window is where you'll go in and start your new creation of a template or your modification of an existing template. So to start with, you need to select a report name. So I've previously worked with a SOP link invoice form, and so that's the form that initially populates in the dropdown. I received the last 10 reports that I've worked with in this dropdown, so making it quick and easy for me to select reports that I work with most commonly. But if this report or the report I want to modify or create a template for does not exist in this dropdown, I select the More Reports option. And that gives me a list of the reports that I can choose from. So I select my product, so it might be Microsoft Dynamics GP, it could be a third party or um, ISV product. And then we get the series, we'll stick with sales, and then we have the option of original, modified, or all reports. The original report just means that it's a report writer report that I have not modified. It's the, the original report as is. The modified report is an, is basically means that I've touched that report in some fashion. Maybe I've added a field, removed a field, added a logo, whatever the case might be, but I've modified that original report in some fashion, and that, that's designated as a modified report. So I come in and I can select, um, either do a search, from the search and say sales blank uh, order and do a search or I can come in and I can just do a selection right off my list. So either way. Okay, so I'm going to continue to work with the SOP blank invoice form since that's the one that I've created those templates for. Okay, so once we're in this window, we have, going down a little bit further into the middle of the window, we have some more information regarding your templates. So we've got the name of the report at the top that you're working with and the status of that report. In the middle of the window, we have the templates that are associated or assigned to this report. So basically what this is saying now, based on the information I have in front of me, is that the SOP blank invoice form template, and basically I've got three different samples of each, 
are assigned to the Soplink invoice form report, or basically my word templates that are assigned to my dexterity or my report writer report. Also gives you the last date they were modified and created and so forth. Okay, so you notice that another thing that's a little bit different between these three options or these three templates listed is that one has a little asterisk to the right. That means that it's the default template. So the report templates that have asterisks behind them, <clears throat> basically those cannot be modified. We want to keep those in a pure format so that if something does go wrong with the report template as you modify it, you can always go back to the default. So if I wanted to create something from, basically I want to work with this template, but I want to create a new, a new, uh, a new template. Uh, basically what I do is I select new. And then I have two options here. One is a blank template. So basically I just start from scratch. I lay out my whole Word document and so forth. A much easier option is to use an existing template. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm creating a template from a template. As I come in here, I have the option to use my default template as, as an example or a starting point for my new template. Or I can use one of the other two, uh, the Surface or the Xbox template as my base. So in here I'll just say template and we'll just call it demo and hit create. So essentially what happens behind the scenes is when I select create, essentially what we're doing in the application is we're going out to the report writer report that's selected at, at the top of this window and we're grabbing the report definition from that report and bringing those fields and mapping them into the report template. So that's happening behind the scenes as you hit select. So in many cases we have report writer reports that have been modified. Basically most of our, I'd say, you know, 75% plus of our customers have some type of report writer report that's been modified. Again, going back into the initial example that I talked about where you need to have different information going out to different agencies, for example. So because there is a need for different information based on the customers and vendors you're sending documents to, most people do have these modified reports. Now in the example, if you're creating a template from a modified report, Again, you go through the same process. It's basically instead of selecting the original report, you select the modified version of the report. As you select the modified version of the report, when I select to create the template, it's going to take the fields that are available on that modified report and make them available for the template. So as I come through now, I see that I have this demo. Okay, so my next step would be to modify. So I select the modify button. And again, you can see the experience now to modify the template is not in Report Writer, it's in Microsoft Word, which again is a very familiar application for most users. So one thing I do want to point out is a few things in, return, in regards to the um, template add-in for Microsoft Dynamics GP and how to install that. So I'm going to go back to my desktop here and open the install for Microsoft Dynamics GP 2013. And this is basically opening the media file. And so I come in here, I've got the application that you normally install for the entire GP product. And as I look under additional products, you're going to see this Microsoft Dynamics GP add-in for Microsoft Word. I need to install this in order to make modifications to these templates that I've created. So it's basically a very simple install. You select this and you install it to your local drive. And that's, that's usually about it. Um, in that case, after I've installed it, when you launch Office, or excuse me, Microsoft Office Word for the first time, it'll just give you an indicator that it's loading this additional add-in from Microsoft Dynamics GP. There's nothing that you have to accept. Um, once it's installed, it's installed, and it just, um, it goes, it's, it, lo it loads up, the, ad the add-in loads up when you launch Word for the first time. So again, you will need to go into the install media, go to the additional products, and install this add-in for Word if you want to make modifications to your templates. Okay, so now we've, we've uh, opened the template in Word. We can see we've got this demo template. The next thing that's uh, most common that people have a hard time finding is that I don't see the add-in. The add-in actually shows up under the Developer tab, and by default, the Developer tab does not appear in Microsoft Word. So we need to go to File, Options, Customize Ribbon, and then under the main tabs, turn on your developer tab and select OK. Now at this point we have a developer tab and now you can see we've got that add-in showing in the ribbon for Microsoft Dynamics GP templates. So if I select the field list, now I can see that this is the XML behind the template. So essentially what happens 
is that the report writer report or the, the uh, report definition, all the fields that are on the report, basically re get represented as XML, and the XML is mapped to fields or content controls within the Microsoft Office Word document. So these are all the fields. These are the heading, the report sections. And as I, re as I click through the report sections, the body, et cetera, these are all the fields that are available in the report writer report to add to my template. So by default, we have 35 plus templates that we provide for you. Again, these are based on the most commonly used documents that you'd send out around sales, sales orders, and purchase orders. Uh, we also have customer statements. We also have um, receivables documents and so forth. So basically, sales and purchasing documents. Any document that you'd really want to send out to either a customer or a vendor um, and be, be able to represent your customer or your, your company well by being able to personalize these documents, make them look more professional without, again, ever having to touch your report writer report. Okay, so now if I take this default template, let's just say I have a modified report that I need to add some fields for. So again, I would just go in, select the section of the report that contains my, my field that I've added to the report, for example, select the field, and drag and drop it onto my template. So it's very straightforward, very easy to make those modifications. One thing I will make note of is that the information on the report itself or the template, it has to be in a table. Okay, so this is what I mean by table. So if you come into Word and you open your template, what I usually like to do when I modify my templates is I like to turn the borders on so that way I can see where, our, where my tables are residing. Now in this case, if I wanted to drop a ship to or a salesperson address or a salesperson ID onto my report, it's basically a drag and drop um, scenario. It's very easy for me to do that. Okay, once I've made my modifications, I can go ahead and turn that template off if I choose to. Let's just say I want to make some modifications around the total. I've got a customer that um, advanced paper, they don't like to pay their bills on time or they don't like to pay the full amount. So I'm going to uh, just change my document so that my title is in red and maybe I'll increase the font size a little bit just to make sure that they're not missing what the amount is that they actually owe. So we'll go in, again, a simple modification. We'll save the document. Now as you're saving the document, uh, this does not automatically get imported back into Dynamics GP, so we'll show you how to do that. Another important thing is when you're doing save, do a save as, save your document, and then make sure you check the checkbox at the bottom that says maintain compatibility with previous versions of Word. Um, that's very important. If you don't select that, sometimes fields um, don't show on the reports like you intended them to be, and so just make sure you're selecting that maintain compatibility. Okay, so now I've created my template. I've made modifications to it. Basically, again, very easy uh, change as far as just changing the, uh, the color and the, the font style for my total. So I'll, get in, I'll go ahead and close that. And we go back into Microsoft Dynamics GP. Okay, so now I've created the template. I've modified the template. Now I need to import it so I can start using it. <clears throat> so we'll select the template we want to bring in. So in this case, it's demo. We select the, the plus sign. And going back to my desktop, we'll select the template that I've just created. And uh, we'll go ahead, yes, and say we want, we, we want to overwrite that. Now, sometimes when I'm doing a demo, um, sometimes I forget to close Word. You do need to have Word closed. If Word is still open, that's why I kind of quickly checked here. Um, if Word is still open when I'm doing the import, then what will happen is you'll get an error message. So again, just make sure Word is closed. If you get an error message, close Word and you'll be good to go. All right, so now we've got our template created. And um, go back to, so looking at the module overview, so that's how you go in and modify a template or create a template from scratch. And so now let's go look at the next step of how do we use this template? How do we assign it out to our customers and vendors? Okay, so from the same template maintenance window, template maintenance window, we take the report that we want to, or the template that we want to assign, and we need to assign it to the company to say that we want to use this for this company. And then we also need to def define which customers or vendors we want to assign this report to. Okay, so we go under the assign button, 
or you can do a right click and get the same functionality, but we'll go up into the menu and say assign, and then we go to company. When you assign a template to a company, you have the option to assign it to just the company that you're in at the current time or logged into, or you can assign it to all companies if you choose to do so. So again, making it very easy to go in and uh, making it more of a system-wide thing where you can assign different templates to different companies all within one, one session or one company without having to log out, log back in sort of scenario. <clears throat> okay, so we can say, okay, we've got these two... Uh, companies we want to use this template for, the demo template for. We can also go in and set it as a default. So going back to my initial example of having one batch with three transactions and being able to print three different documents, three different personalized or different documents in one single batch, essentially what had happened when I did the, the printing job on that is that I had the surface, um, the surface template assigned to Aaron Fitz, for example. So I went in and did the assignment. And then I went in and I assigned the Xbox template to Adam Park. Now, advanced paper, which was that third, third um, invoice in the document, they just used the default. So this is essentially what I mean by using the default. I can come into this window and say that if I'm looking at a particular customer and the customer class that they're assigned to doesn't have as assigned templates to it, or the particular customer does not have an assigned template, then use the default. It's basically, this is the fallback I'm going to use if they don't have a specific template assigned to them. So again, this is where I go in and select which template I want to use as the default or basically that fallback report if I don't have one specifically assigned to the customer. And again, I can go into this window and I can assign the default for this company or else um, other companies that I might have. Okay, so now we've assigned it to the company, we'll hit save. The next thing we need to do is we need to assign it to a customer. So you notice that in my drop down I have customer and company. I don't have anything dealing with vendor. The application is smart enough to understand that because I'm working with a sales report, that it's a customer I want to assign this to and not a vendor. So I select customer. In this case, I select the add because I don't have anything added or assigned to these customers or customer classes. And it opens the add customer window. And I have two options from this window. I can either add by customer class. So I can say maybe my Australian customers, that whole class of customers will get this template. And as I expand that out, I can see these are the customers that are belonging to that class and these are the customers that will get the template that shows the red marking on the bottom with your total. Okay, so in this case, I'll go ahead and delete that because I don't, I'm not too concerned about a whole class. I'm more interested in a specific customer to send this to. So I'll switch back to my customer ID and we'll select, I'll get rid of my sort here. We'll select advanced paper, we'll insert, the other thing that I do want to mention about the insert is that I can do multiple inserts so that if I have a range of customers from A to D, a range of customers from N to S, and a range of customers from X to Z, I can go in and I can assign those to separate ranges right within this single window. Uh, so I can basically do multiple inserts or multiple filters um, right from this window. So we'll go ahead and select OK because again in this case I just want to use this template for advanced paper. Now, one of the things that I will point out on this window is that you see a checkbox for the customer. This checkbox does not have to be checked in order for that template to be assigned to this customer. Essentially, if the customer or the customer class shows up or appears in this window, it has been assigned once you hit save. The checkbox is only used to enable or disable the remove selection um, button at the top. So just to avoid some confusion there, if you see your customers, listed in this window or customer classes. Once you hit save, they are assigned. So we'll save that. Okay, so now let's go back and look at that same document that we had sent out. So we'll go back to our transactions. We'll grab our template batch. We'll print. And in this case, I'm going to select the print and email. So I'm going to select print, and then in this case, you, again, we see the report type as document as by the default because there is a template assigned to this report. 
And now as we print, <clears throat> now let's see what the changes are. So we still have advan or excuse me, Aaron Fitz with the Surface template, Adam Park with the Xbox template. Now at advanced paper, oh, we can see our borders. I forgot to turn my borders off, so I want to turn my borders off or hide my borders before I save my template. But you'll notice that the change we made with making the font size bolder and red and bigger, we can see that advanced paper, who again, sometimes has a problem paying their, their bills um, in full. We can see that we went in and we basically highlighted what the amount is that they owe. So again, an easy way to go and, and make a modification for a specific company or a customer that you want to send this template to. So in recap, um, for overview of this section, we looked at the template assignments. Again, looking at template assignments, the pain point was along the lines of, I need to assign or I need to send this document to this customer because they have specific needs in regards to the information that's on the, on the invoice, for example, or a purchase order. And so in this case, it allows me to go in, make my modifications, and make those assignments to a particular customer or customer class. And at that point, once I do the printing or emailing, that information is available the way I want that customer to see it or in the, the way that that customer needs to see it. So let's switch over to our email documentation or our email and just show you what this would look like from the user's perspective. So in this case now, I'm using, I have an integration with Exchange Server on Office 365, so I'm running in the cloud for my email. In this case now, we can see we have the three documents that came across. I just sent them all to myself. We can see we have PDF attachments and we can customize this message as well. I just used a generic message saying, you know, thank you for your business, essentially. And as we open these documents now, we'll get this as a PDF format. And again, remove the borders or hide the borders before you save it. But essentially, it gives us that template that we modified in a PDF format. Now, I'm using t Word templates um, some people were a little leery in regards to, I want to send these out as electronic documents. What happens when somebody wants to modify them, for example? So we'll touch on that in the next section, which is security. But essentially what you can do is you have different options as far as how you want that document to be sent. So let's go back in the Dynamics GP. And let's switch over to our customer card. And I'll take a, have you take a look at what it looks like from an email perspective and how you set that up. Okay, so let's just choose a record again. We'll use good old Aaron Fitz as our record. And we can go to our email button on the customer info, um, maintenance window. And these are the different templates that we provide. So we can see there's a long list of templates. You can choose which templates you want to make available in email. So if there's certain templates you don't want to email out, maybe you, don't, you never want to send out a packing slip or you never want to send out a statement, what you do is you just come in here and you basically turn these off. So in that case, you don't have those documents being emailed out to customers. You can still print them in an email or, excuse me, a Word template format. They just won't email. Now, the other option you have is take a look at what type of document that you'd want to send out to the customer. So every customer has a choice as far as how, what format or how do they want to see the documents they receive. So in this case, I've got something very generic for sales documents. And for the format, I can use a drop-down and see I can use a docx, I can use HTML, PDF, or XPS. Now, important thing to mention is that with docx, that you can, uh, there's a setting within Microsoft Dynamics GP to do a random password setting. So you can go in and you can assign a randomly generated password to your Word document. So in that case, when it gets sent out, even the person that's generating the document doesn't know the password because it's randomly generated. That document gets sent out, it cannot be modified because it's password protected. Um, the other thing is you, you can assign a password that you know, but in that case, again, if you, if you want really tight security, the person that sets the password obviously knows what the password is and could modify the document if they choose to do so. So recommendation would be just use that randomly generated password. Again, you could use the document, the docx format, or if you want, again, something more secure, you could go PDF. But I think the bottom line is, you know, when you talk about security, there's so many different tools that even with PDF, if somebody has PDF Writer, or you know, there's, a, there's so many things you, you have access to in the world today as far as if somebody wants to really change a document, there's probably nothing that will stop them from doing it. 
but what, really what you have to keep in mind is that the master document is always within your system, right? So even if somebody would make some modifications to a document and shouldn't, you still own the master copy of all the documentation you send out. So um, just a little, a little word on that. Okay, so that was the template assignments, and next we'll talk about security. So from the security aspect, this is actually probably the simplest part, rather than the templates, you know, obviously become enabled just by loading the application, but security, there's really nothing you have to do with security. Security is built in on the report writer security model. So essentially, if you have security access to run a report, you have security access to run a template. So for example, if I come in, and I do sales and I do sales, I do the sales batches and we'll just do print again following the same steps. And instead of the template, I'm going to use the, the standard reporting type and select screen. Okay, so this is an example of the report writer version of the report. Again, it looks a little bit different. You can see that all the reports or all the invoices are identical. There's no differences between what we send to customer A versus customer B. So again, that's the advantage of using the template because we can really personalize what that information looks like based on who we're sending it to. But then the other thing to keep in mind though, because I have security access to run this report, I also have security access to run the template that's associated with it. So there's no difference in security when it comes to no separate security model for templates. It's all using the existing report writer security model in order to run the reports. Because essentially behind the scenes, the data is coming from your, your report writer report, and so that's what's generating the data and sending it out. Now one more thing that I will show is based on the security for a report, for example. Let's go back and just run a oh, quick customer report. You can also print these files to, <clears throat> to a local drive or to the printer obviously. We'll just go to the desktop. And this is what I wanted to show around the save as type. So probably should have covered this when we did the modifications or creating a new template. But essentially what you can do is you use the XML data file. This was a new report type that was added when we released the word templates. And essentially what this allows you to do is, going back to what I said is, as far as the XML data is mapped to your word templates or your, your content types within word templates. And so essentially what we've added is a, the ability to output your information or output your report information as an, as an XML format. Once you have the XML format, then you can take that and you create your new template from scratch if you choose to do that. Again, most customers will just use um, create a template off of an existing template rather than starting from scratch, but this is another option if you choose to do that. So what we've learned in module three for Word templates. First of all, we looked at what are the pain points and why did we do Word templates? What, do, what pain points do they resolve? Again, going back and looking at simple things that should be simple. And it's, Word templates have really simplified things like adding logos to reports or adding fields to reports or removing fields or adding a different font color, for example. We can do all that now within a Microsoft Word environment rather than a report writer environment. So again, it opens up the possibilities of more people having access to make these simple modifications. They don't have to go to their IT staff. They don't have to go in and put in a request to modify these reports just to do something simple like adding uh, red font to the total. And it's very quick, very easy for somebody to go in and make those modifications right within a Word environment. We looked at how to configure your Word templates. Word templates, really, there's, there's really nothing for configuration in order for them to be enabled within the application. The Word templates are enabled by default when you install Microsoft Dynamics GP. Really, the only configuration that you need to do up front, if you choose to do so, would be to add those logos for your companies. Other than that, the Word templates are, are um, assigned to these particular reports and are ready to go right when you install the Dynamics GP application. We looked at how to modify and assign Word templates. So the examples of going in and and uh, adding uh, simple text or bolding text and maybe changing the color of the text, saving that off into a local directory, importing that into the Dynamics GP application, and then how do we take that template and assign it to a specific customer? Again, once those templates are imported into the application, 
we can assign those to a particular company and make that the default. Um, so basically, if, if a customer or a vendor does not have a, a specific template assigned to them, they get the default. Or, again, we can assign it them a specific template. And then lastly, looking at the security model. Again, the security model is very straightforward for this functionality. The, we leverage the existing report writer security model. So if you have access to run the Microsoft Dynamics GP report writer version of the report, you also have security access by default to run the template. So thank you, and that is a conclusion of Module 3, Word Templates.